Hi, Jackson and Evelyn. It's Miss Candy. Hey, I have a fun fall book I thought I would read to you. It's called The Biggest Pumpkin Ever by Stephen Craw. It's about two friends and one pumpkin. And the friends are mice. So let me read it to you. The Biggest Pumpkin Ever. Once there were two mice who fell in love with the same pumpkin. Clayton, the house mouse, noticed it one day in the vegetable garden. It was still a little and green, but Clayton thought he could make it grow really big. It might even get big enough to win the grand prize at the town pumpkin contest. Desmond, the field mouse, discovered the pumpkin the same day. He thought that if he helped it grow, it could become the biggest jack-o'-lantern in the neighborhood. So here's the mouse house, and here's the field house. That afternoon, Clayton watered the pumpkin. He also mixed up some fertilizer of manure and water. He spread the mixture around the pumpkin to make it grow larger. That very same night, Desmond went into the garden. He watered the pumpkin too. He also spread some manure mixture with water around it. Look at that, during the day, he made sure to water the pumpkin and at night, this friend did. The next day, Clayton watered and fertilized the pumpkin again. The next night, Desmond did the same and the pumpkin began to grow. By the end of the month, the pumpkin was so large, Clayton couldn't believe his eyes. So here they are, they're both out watering and that pumpkin's growing. Notice the pumpkin is green in the beginning. It doesn't turn orange until it's almost ready to be picked off the vine. My goodness, said Clayton's mother, and it's not even full grown. Clayton shrugged. All I do is water it, he said. Clayton's mother whispered in his ear, if you want the pumpkin to grow bigger, faster, you should use sugar water. That night, Desmond brought his brother Morris to see the pumpkin. Morris knew everything there was to know about growing things. That's some pumpkin, he said. Desmond shrugged. All I do is water it, he said. Morris whispered in his ear, you should try using sugar water, he said. So here they are, Clayton and Morris. And they were both given the same tip. The next day, Clayton dug a small hole beside the pumpkin vine. In the hole, he placed a bowl full of sugar water. He cut into the vine a few inches from the pumpkin. In the cut, he put one, one end of a piece of candle wick. Then he put the other end in the bowl of sugar water. That night, on the other side of the pumpkin, Desmond did exactly the same thing. Within a week, the pumpkin was twice the size it had been. Within two weeks, it was absolutely enormous. So here he is putting some sugar water and he's doing the same thing. And look how the pumpkin's growing. It's bigger than they are now. And it's still green because it's not fully grown yet. Clayton was amazed. He ran down the road and peeked into his friend Jimmy's pumpkin patch. The pumpkin Jimmy was growing for the contest looked much smaller. Clayton scratched his head. I have an amazing pumpkin, he said out loud, and I think I'm gonna win this contest. That night, Desmond and his brother Morris spent a long time looking at the pumpkin how do you think it got that big? Desmond asked. Moore shrugged. A little luck, a little skill. It's going to make some jack-o'-lantern, said Desmond. It sure is, said Morris. So here's the friend's pumpkin, and it's so tiny compared to the one that they're both watering and taking care of. 
A week later, Clayton noticed the pumpkin was bigger than the family car. During the day, everyone knew he knew came to admire it. And at night, all the field mice gathered round to do the same. By now, summer was almost over. In a week, the pumpkin would be full grown and start turning yellowish and then orange. A few weeks after that, it would be ripe and ready for the pumpkin contest. Clayton could hardly wait. The pumpkin was growing so fast, it would soon be larger than his house. Then he had a terrible thought. If the pumpkin was so big, how would he get it to the contest? It wouldn't fit in his red wagon. It wouldn't even fit in a truck. Clayton decided to worry about this when the time came. Look at everybody coming out and looking at the pumpkin. During the day, at night, look how ginormous it is. Holy moly. That night, the weather grew cold. Thinking there might be an early frost, Clayton rushed out to the pumpkin with his blanket. One was not enough. Soon he was rushing back and forth, carrying all the blankets from his house. As he worked, he hummed a little song. And as he hummed, he heard someone else singing. He also began to realize that someone else was covering the pumpkin with blankets. Desmond too had seen the danger of early frost. He too had brought blankets for the pumpkin. And as he worked, he sang a little song. And as he sang, he began to realize that someone else was working and humming. Look at that, they're both working on opposite sides of the pumpkin. Clayton stopped humming. He put down his pile of blankets and peered around the corner of the pumpkin. Desmond stopped singing. He put down his blankets and peered around the corner of the pumpkin. The two of them bumped heads and fell. You've been feeding the pumpkin, said Clayton. You've been feeding the pumpkin, said Desmond. That's why it got so big, said Clayton. That's why it got so big, said Desmond. They burst out laughing. Here they're peeking around the pumpkin. Here they bumped into each other and realized they've both been doing the same thing. When everything had been explained, Clayton said, I know I'll win the contest if I can get the pumpkin to town. Desmond smiled. I'll help you. Just let me carve the pumpkin into a jack-o'-lantern for Halloween when the contest is over. It's a deal, said Clayton. A deal, said Desmond, and they shook on it. The morning of the contest was bright and sunny. Mice were bringing their pumpkins to the town square by truck and car and wagon. Some were rolling them along the ground. So here they make a deal that they're going to share the pumpkin and how they're going to share it. And so one's gonna enter into a pumpkin contest and the other one wants to carve it into a jack-o'-lantern. And here you can see all their little friends are bringing pumpkins to town. You see all the different ways they're bringing them into town? Suddenly, they all stopped short. Over the fields came the biggest pumpkin anyone had ever seen. It was being pulled by a hundred field mice on motorcycles. Oh my goodness, see everybody stopped, turned around to look. And look at all these mice on motorcycles pulling that pumpkin. Can you believe it, it was that big? When the pumpkin reached town, it was too big for any of the streets. Clayton had to explain why they couldn't bring it to the square. The mayor understood at once. He led the crowd to the giant pumpkin and pinned the first prize ribbon on its side. Then everyone danced around it. Who would have believed this, said Clayton as he danced. Who would have 
believed this, said Desmond at the same moment. So here they are, they're all dancing around the pumpkin. And here's the mayor giving it the blue ribbon. When the celebration was over, the hundred field mice pulled the pumpkin back to the field. The day before Halloween, they carved it into the best jack-o'-lantern ever. Look at that. They're starting to cut out some eyes and a nose. They even need ladders to get in there. And do you see what they did? They even cleaned out the inside. There's pumpkin seeds. Did you guys carve pumpkins? I bet you did. Did you save your seeds? And on Halloween night, its wonderful smiling face could be seen glowing for miles around. Look at that. So you'll have to tell me if when you go trick-or-treating on Halloween, if you see jack-o'-lanterns glowing and lighting the way as you're walking from house to house. I love you too. Have a good night.